everyone, and welcome to this meeting of Area Committee 5. The first item on the agenda is election of chair. So please can I have nominations for chair? Yes, I'd like to nominate Councillor Phipps, please. Happy to second that. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Kerry. No other nominations? Okay, thank you. So I'll, I'll pass over now to Councillor Phipps. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, and, and welcome to today's meeting. Um, we are live on YouTube, so um, keep our videos on where possible. Um, and um, we will be expecting a, uh, members of the public to join us at some point. Um, I think, fortunately, I can see everybody on the front screen. So if you do want to speak, I think you can wave at me. Um, We'll see how that goes. Uh, I think that's just, yeah. We've got two people in the waiting room all waiting for us, but um, we will invite them in just a little bit later for the public forum. Um, moving swiftly on, uh, minutes of the last meeting. Has everybody had a chance to look at them and has any comments to be made about them? 19th of September. No comments about them? Happy to move on? Good, great. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, so the next bit is moving on to, oh, just lost an agenda. Um, is any declarations of interest? I have nothing to declare. <laughs> I think in the previous meetings, we've done things like uh, say whether or not we've been trustees of organisations that have been applying for grants. Um, that's less applicable this year because we haven't got the same process, but just to, to be mindful of that. If there's no other declarations of interest, we will move swiftly to the public forum and wait for our... Hello. You're on mute. So I think we have two statements, um, simply on the basis of who popped up first. Is, is Ralph, is it? We have a, yeah, sorry, just I'm, to say we confirmed that we've had some questions and statements. And these, um, we've got Ralph Openshaw and Joe Moore who actually wanted to attend and make their statement in person. Yep. Um, I think I'm reading the statement that Ralph's open to questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do. And, and just to say, you're very welcome to stay for the meeting if you wish, or you can leave as you choose. It's entirely up to you. We've, um, in the past, people have, have happened today, but it's entirely up to you. Well, we'd quite like to know the outcome. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, by all means, stay. So, would you like to make your statement? Okay. Um, I'm Jo Moore and I'm the chair of Friends of Eastwood Farm and we've been working on our project for a long time. So this is our statement. Uh, Friends of Eastwood Farm have been working to get the dilapidated playground on Eastwood Farm replaced. The fundraising was kick-started in 2019 when Bristol City Council awarded us 65,000 and the promise of paying the landfill tax 10% grant match funding towards the project. The build cost of which is estimated at 124,747. We have since more or less managed to match the SIL funding, having raised the further 64,527 pounds. With the project management fee, contingency and 10% landfill match grant match, the total project cost is nearly 150,000. So that with the fundraising raised to date, 
we are still £10,000 short of the target. We had hoped to raise the balance through applications to quarter express grants and awards for all. However, both have reassigned their funds to projects related to COVID-19 only, as have other funds we might have otherwise gone to. We want to avoid having to reduce the overall project value, as we're aware that this is likely to be disproportionately into the budget for playground equipment due to all the fixed costs such as landscaping and play surface. The shortfall is roughly a fifth of the value of the playground equipment budgeted. We have plans to open a crowd fund as soon as possible. We're asking for this still money as it could make a really big difference since a £10,000 plus crowdfund would be a really big stretch in this poorer part of the city. People will not contribute in the same way if the sum seems unrealistic. The crowdfunder will be more successful if the target sums sound attainable. That's my statement or our Thank statement. You. Thank you very much. Um, I think we move on to the discussions a little bit afterwards. Um, but we've had, um, did you want to say anything, Ralph, or do you want to just be here for? Um, I'll only, only that um, we rounded off the shortfall to 10,000. In fact, more accurately, accurately, it's just around 12,000. So it's a bit more really, just to be more precise. But no, that's fine. Mm. Gary, did you want to say something? Yeah, as, as we've got guests here, can we not juggle the, the agenda and, and deal with this item first? Rather than having to sit through the rest of a boring meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure Tim and I would be very happy if that were to uh, to happen. I'd be happy to do that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is everybody else happy to hop about? Is that Keith? Do you want me to um to break to, to share screen just to show the i the art the um proposal? That would be really helpful. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay, can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to whistling through and <clears throat> it's a good job we don't use paper anymore isn't it um my my there thoughts are, imagine all this out here you go 15 times yeah so this is the request it, it it really hangs on this budget, really, doesn't it? Which I uh, which I guess your public forum statements have just been alluding to. Yeah, yeah. So the proposal is, and th this is the th this was the original budget, and then it's been amended because of various juggles because some um, less money was raised from. Um, landfill only five thousand is needed to to be spent by parks so that's meant that that that, that um, they've been able to reduce the amount of their project management costs um with the money that they're contributing um which reduced it means now that there's a ten thousand two hundred and fifty eight on the figures that tim and i were working on on this it's obviously slightly different from what ralph has just said um, but broadly speaking, there's a shortfall. Um, it set out the, the thinking behind that, and the recommendation is to decide whether you want to award any additional sill. The only thing I would just say, Celia, is just to mm -hmm. draw the committee's attention to how much sill you actually, I should say, don't have. Yes, that currently. I was just yeah, going yeah, to make yeah. that comment that we are yeah. at the moment minus 21,000. So that that in a sense that will come we hope over the next year because we're not awarding to any other projects and the reason why we can look at this one is because this project's already in train um but yes yeah, so bear in mind 
we haven't got 21K at the moment, and we're hoping that it will come over the year. Um, but what, what, do, what do others think? I, sorry, I, I, I was uh, interested in the comment about uh, crowdfunding 10,000 being too much. That suggested to me that a small amount of crowdfunding could be done. How about if we put in 75%, bearing in mind that we are already overdrawn? Um, so, you know, how, how do the applicants actually think about that? Um, I, think, I think they've done enough fundraising, to be honest. I think we should give them the full amount. We'll be very well, very glad of what we're given, of course. Um, if we're given the full amount, it means that we have less pressure on the crowdfund um, and we're more likely to reach the target in terms of equipment that we'd anticipated. Tim, do you want to come in? Celia, yes. I've been indicating, but I don't know what the, the deal is at the moment. I have actually had my hand up for three people Sorry, who girls. spoke in front of me. So I don't know what the protocol is. Well, you... I, originally, I could see everybody. But if you put your hand up in the participants, I can see. But do you want to go ahead, Joss, before Tim? Right. Um, so you, the moment, it sounds like you're 12,000 short of your um, to deliver this project. Um, what I'm con slightly concerned with with Gary's proposal, although I understand it, if you don't meet your expectation of having to raise a three or four thousand, it might mean that the project is not undeliverable, but it's get, you're going to really struggle. So what I was wondering is if you went ahead with your crowdfunding, so an alternative source of funding, uh, but at this committee we promised we we said you could have the ten thousand you need if you raise more than the two thousand which you're going to need to make up the shortfall um then it means that the council doesn't have to spend as much money i mean i don't know whether that's a possibility i'd have to look for advice on whether that's, that's a possibility but what i don't want us to do today it just feels a little bit unfair if we say you could have 75% and that actually means that you're 25% of that, you know, three sort of 3,000 pounds short, for example. And it just meant that the project couldn't go ahead. And that, that, seems would be, a, that would be, that seems to me to be a great shame to stop the project for such a small amount of money. But if the crowdfunding came in that you were really successful and able to pull in 10K, for example, fantastic. And it would just mean that we wouldn't need to spend it out of the sill money. I don't know how other people feel about that. that I'm happy to switch support behind that. And I think also Parks will draw down the money as it's required. So we'll, you know, it, it, it's not going to be all in one lump sum, is it? Uh, Tim, then Mark, please. OK, thanks, Celia. Um, yeah, we, uh, Tony and I met with Parks on Tuesday and they confirmed that they're actually, um, they're ready to go. Uh, with tenders uh, on after this meeting, basically. So um, the good thing is that it's this is a shovel-ready project and it will get off the ground. And if we guarantee the full amount now, th and it then comes in that the cost is slightly less, we just wouldn't need to draw down the full amount of the bill. Yeah. Um, so that's exactly what Gary and um, Joss were just saying there. Um, but I think that's unlikely because they were telling us that a number of um, providers of playground equipment are just not uh, in the game at the moment because of COVID-19. And uh, the last project they went out for tender, they went out to, I think they said they went out to, to five companies and got one back, one response. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, there, are, there are a lot of variables. I think, uh, as Josh said, if we can just guarantee that we can go ahead with this now. Um, if um, if Ralph and Joe can raise a bit more funding and bring the SIL requirement down, that's great. But if not, we know that this is pretty much done and dusted and, and we will actually deliver something from, from last year's SIL within the next uh, 12 months, which would be great. Great. Mark? 
Thanks. I wanted to support what Joss said. I think we need to give confidence to the project that it can go ahead. It's been committed for a long time and we've always prioritised children's play and green spaces in terms of awards, uh, even prior to, to uh, this area group being, being formed. Um, and the reason that we've got a particular negative uh, in terms of at the moment is just the pause to development activity caused by COVID, and you know I'm I'm not hearing from officers that there that there's any concern that this is not going to come through at some stage. It's simply about the phasing of development through planning and through uh, conditions and all and all that those other aspects. So I, I want to support what Josh said. Mm. So on that basis, I think we're probably ready to to make a decision. Um, do we have to vote on this, Keith, or how do we do that? Well, or... Corinna will be, the, be your guide on that. I think we need to vote okay. so, we, so we have some transparency and obviously um, the public can see that they, with however the decision goes. Okay. Yeah. Can I suggest that it needs to be raised as capped at or less than? So basically we know that we're given a, a guarantee for the scheme to go ahead but it might not come to 10,000 sort of thing. Yes, I think, I think that's the same with all SIL projects, basically, yeah. isn't it? That you only draw down on the amount of money that is, is yeah. needed at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. So do, do we need a, a specific proposal, um, a specifically worded proposal, something to the effect of, I propose um, SIL funding up to... Ten thousand um, pounds to be put towards this project from this meeting is that is that an acceptable proposal? It could be. I, I think it's um, as Tim said. I think it's it's ten thousand pounds is being allocated, isn't it? So um, yeah. I propose we allocate ten thousand yes. pounds to the project. Well, I will second that, in a, or, or you can second me. I was first, come on. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever. So, I, okay, I so do. that's the proposal. So all of those in favour of that proposal? I'm not quite sure how we do this. Wave your hand. You put the screen full. Put the is, screen. is there any, is there any, any dissent? Is there any, yes. anyone objecting to that? Any abstentions? I think that's an, a unanimous vote for 10k for the park. Could, 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 I, I, now. Could, could I ask them in here? Because I'm disappointed that a bid didn't come in from this area two or three years before, a few years beforehand, because there was a, there was bids coming in from all around Bristol for a big pot we set up. Uh, just prior to uh, to uh, uh, the first mayor, and lots of schemes were delivered, and it seemed to me that Briz East should have qualified, and I'm just wondering why uh, no, no bid came in at that point. I, my understanding is that Derek's been working on this project for uh, a number of years. I'm looking at Joe and Ralph here. I mean, this is not a new... Not, this, is, this project's not new to the table at all, is it? And I'm not sure... Picking up on Gary's point, Ralph. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we, we handed out money. Uh, Gary, then... Ralph, Ralph was going to respond. All right, sorry. Yeah, I think, I don't think, uh, Joe might correct me, but I don't think we were really aware of the possibility of SIL money and we didn't really get underway with the funding. Perhaps we didn't have the skills or the energy in the group at that time, but it was certainly through um, Greater Brislington together that we became aware of SIL. And um, as was said, Derek put a huge amount of effort into this first um, request, which was successful up to 65,000, which got us started. And that was fantastic thing. Yeah, the money was actually prior to SIL actually being invented. It was mainstream council funding. Oh. And it funded 42 schemes across the city. But, you know, Britain to the East missed out, and it's a real pity. No, I think um, originally the funding had been earmarked for this project, but um, was 
then withdrawn for some reason or other, uh, or... Can I add in? A, a dateline was missed, I think, something along those lines. All oh, right. Um, Mark, have you, you've your hand's still up, or have you got something you'd like to add? Oh. No, so sorry, I had, had it up, I have to take it okay. off now. All right. <laughs> okay, so, well, thanks for those comments, that sort of historical information for us. I think it probably makes it all the more reason that we, we make this decision. So the decision's been made now, 10K. Um, we'll move on to the next item, unless Keith wants to make any other additional comments. No, not at no. all. I'll just say thank you before I disappear. Okay. Thank you very <laughs> thank much, you all of you. It was fantastic yes. news. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay, well, I'm just crudely scrolling back here um, just to take yeah. you to your tree proposal, basically. Um, you'll be aware that, um, as you said, you're in minus 21,000, uh, just and a half, basically, with your sill. Um, but that's going to re recuperate over the next year. You're not going to be making decisions about that for another over a year. Um, your section 106, uh, you've got 103,607.24 of uncommitted section 106, of which 17,629 pound 70 is specifically designated for tree planting replacement. And John Atkinson is putting forward proposals um, for um, delivering 23 tree plantings across the area, committee five area, that fit within the legal area constraints of those two section 106s, um, that, uh, three, sorry, section 106s here that, um, that are available to you. Um, and um, he's, he's listed out the proposals here in Latin for you of um, the proposed tree planting. So what I suggest really, Celia, is that John talks you through this because he know, knows what he's talking yep. about and I don't. Yep. John, over, over to you, please. Okay, so um, all of these plots um, are mapped to the individual contributions of which the biggest one is the first one on the list. Um, so they are restricted, as you know, they're generally within a mile radius of the, the development. Um, what we do for ease of this really is look at the replacement plots we've got available and um, try and put those on. There's a number of reasons. They're all logistical. Um, it means the service checks are already in place. Any new sites we have, if we have to develop new sites, we have to consult uh, both with highways and local residents and businesses. So to get the, the, the canopy up as quickly as possible, we pick, we pick kind of um, ready-made replacement plots as it were so it was a struggle this year to to find because there's not a lot of uh, replacements available uh, two reasons for that one the private sponsorship scheme is going great guns has done over the last three years so we're losing a lot of that which is great or winning a lot of that and uh, we spent a lot of section 106 in the area last year so kind of caught up with old contributions that have been i suppose sloshing around for a while so uh this is the last list we've come up with um Hopefully it's self-explanatory too. Um, I think this is the fifth of five area committee meetings, Keith, is that right? That we, yes. we look at? And the, the recommendation or the, the suggestion we've had through these, a bit of learning, is that when I do these in the future, we don't just have a boring list. We actually have a, a map for you to look at where these things are. It'll be easier. I think that's a great idea. So I'll carry that forward to next year if that's, that's agreeable to your good selves. And the other thing is, yeah, Keith alluded to, uh, the species are in Latin. Um, that's not me showing off my arboricultural knowledge. It's just we uh, we order in our stock in Latin and we instruct our contractors to plant with the Latin name. So I'll make sure next year we put those with a common name. Um, I don't think you want a translation of them of them all now. So um, that is, 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 I know Councillor Phipps was interested in some sites on Victory Road. Um, yeah. Absolutely no objection to that. They haven't come up on our replacement list and I'm investigating why not, but... Um, Keith had a chat with me yesterday, so I had to yeah. drive around the site this morning. There are already made tree pits there, so I really yeah. can't see a problem unless 
the tree officer who I couldn't get a hold of. I've been trying all day. Uh, I tried the wrong one originally, which is why it's taken a bit longer. Um, unless they say they've looked at this and there is some reason, for instance, underground services they picked up. But I doubt it because that's usually my job to survey and scan. Mm. So well, I think our if... understanding locally, John, is that actually, unfortunately, when the development was done, the developers knocked the two trees, new trees over with their lorry. So ah, disgusting lorry. So right. So it yeah, could, it could be other guys be who uh, yeah reinstate them by chasing the developer because really they should pay for it. But I think we've tried that. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think if we can put them in conditionally and uh, ambit wise, if we replace, <clears throat> excuse me, the two that are South Street Park at the bottom. Yeah. And put those in provisionally, and then uh, if we, if by any uh, way we can get the developer to pay for them, we'll go back to the South Street parks. But if we can agree today that um, if not, I'll plant the Victory Victory Road ones, and uh, we'll try and capture South Street Park through. And I think I think a cherry tree and a Chinese crab apple will be very nice down there. Thank you. I think that's what's listed, actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm they, showing off. They are on the map. Um, Oh yeah, um, I don't know if that's the same for Victory uh, for Victory Road actually, but um, I know there's there's a cherry listed and there was a crab apple as well. So yeah, yeah that's kind of coincidence there. But um, yeah, so okay. we'll, uh, we'll definitely have a look at that. As I said, there's a, bit, there's a lot of private funding coming in for South Street Park, and also some Urban Tree Challenge funding uh, that may have crossed your path which uh, isn't designated a lot for Bedminster, but we're looking at alternative sites at the moment, so that might be captured with that anyway. Okay. So I'm confident any, any trees down there will we'll get. We'll get okay, great. So anybody else? Thank you, John. Was that all you needed to say? Unless there's any questions, yep. Um, anybody got any questions or are you happy to agree? Yes, with? yeah, yeah, I've got questions. Sorry, Joss. <laughs> I've, been, I've been waving my hand. Sorry. Um, it, with regard to um, contractors knocking over uh, yeah. trees, um, I had an absolute classic in uh, road in my ward where a, um, a garden centre van reversed into a nicely new planted tree. But fortunately for me, a resident recorded it on his phone. So the garden centre paid for the replacement of that tree, but I'm sure they wouldn't have owned up to it unless we had chased it. But we got that that tree replaced, which was um, in its way, it was a positive. The interactive map, John is um, and Keith is really, I think we should be moving to, we should have that because it's really helpful to see the locations. And that's really easily accessible anyway, isn't it? On the internet, you can, easily see that the map of the trees and I think we should we should be using that um, my my worry and concern is the lack of opportunity really for new planting because of the cost it just wipes your budget out. I know that just down the road from me we've got um, just off the top it's the only one I can think of actually in Bruce West at the moment is it from the golf club development there's um, replanting of two trees uh, planting of two trees um, within a mile radius there's not a huge amount of opportunity and that's that is that is one of the real problems that I have and when I look at the map of Brislington West and the opportunities that we have in Brislington West I have to say it's pretty slim pickings to be honest with you in fact that some of the opportunities are really really meager and you think oh really you really want to stick a tree in there is you know so I, what I would, would was really hoping is that we could move forward with some looking at more um, exciting propositions and proposals. Because um, I just think at the moment we have, tr for example, there's a, another example. We had a development down near Arno's Vale uh, Park. Fine, no problems about that. And um, I think the tree planting was for maybe two two trees there. Well, I can absolutely tell you, we do not need any more trees in Arno's Vale Park. <laughs> but actually, with a mile radius of that park, there are very few opportunities where you could actually plant a tree. Yeah. Mm. And and that that actually causes well, not great problems, but it does cause problems because actually, I think that that example, there's no other. If you look at the map of Bris for Brislington. There aren't any opportunities within a mile radius mm. apart yeah. from I can tell you where the one opportunity is. And, and Tim and, Ga and Ter uh, Tony will probably know this one 
is you go down Sandy Park on the right hand side where you've got your you're swinging into the little side streets by the pub on that corner there there's a tree planting opportunity there which is a big lump of concrete and actually it's not really a place you'd want to plant a tree and I think that's probably the only opportunity that we've got to plant a tree there yeah. so I'm just saying the lack of opportunity I yeah. think is a real issue because I think as a city we should be a bit if we could we should be a bit more ambitious about where we planting new trees because there are yeah. some opportunities yeah I, I totally agree as I say it's, it's easier for us to do the replacement plant I know. and it is quite an onerous process um I, I know the one you're referring to on Sandy Park and so yeah, it's tried terrible to, tried to sponsor that and we actually did the service checks and it's right by a great big electric substation down there so we had yeah take that's right yeah yeah I know. yeah and it's actually would you want to put a tree there anyway because yeah. it's just like a bit of nothing there really Absolutely. I mean we're bound by a lot of things but what's it what's interesting now is um in quite a few areas we're trying to, to put more tendrils out into parks groups and things like that and get their suggestions for not within parks as you're right uh, there was four went into Arnest Court Park actually last year it's pretty tree rich anyway um, but it's it's look it, if we can get suggestions we can then go and survey it is it is an onus process because we've we've got to do nine service checks which of course include gas electricity etc um, we've got to do the consultation we've got to clear it with highways and then pits are, they are expensive to engineer yeah. looking at at least three and a half grand however the the necessity as we become more successful at getting this 106 spent means we do we do have to go looking and i know that um your tree officer covering that area now is ian clark who's relatively new and he's he is looking all the time and we're 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 in you know cahoots all the time to try and get new locations i have i have actually met him on site to yeah. talk to him about um, opportunities in the yeah. area as yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we will keep looking. As I say, we're going for these quick. I mean, the good news for, for Brislington is, I guess, um, Airy Committee 6 agreed to spend some slightly over the border. It's a mixed blessing, but um, there's two trees in Brislington West that they agreed to fund, I think, around Callington Road area. West Town um, Lane? Probably West Town yeah, Lane. Yeah, it, it may have been to the top of West Town Lane. Yeah. So, but again, that's, that's taking off, as you say, the opportunity. So we, we're definitely going to have, a, have to have a look because... It's not only frustrating for this process, it's frustrating for residents in the area who want to perhaps sponsor trees. So I, I do get it. It's it's a very, it's a difficult environment to, to get plant in those kind of very urban areas because they tend to be paved and tend to be chock full of services. Yeah. But that's, that's that's absolutely not to say we can't try. So yeah, any any suggestions people have, please please do pass them over and we we certainly investigate. Thank John, you very just, much. Just to Thank add you. in, the, the Area Committee 4 also approved some planting of trees in area committee five's um streets didn't they yeah in uh southville and bedminster wards i think yeah okay thank you very much so job for all of us is to link up with our tree officer and find sites i think the next people i think gary tim yeah, and mark say that i'm slightly concerned to hear what well, we don't know whether we're going to get the money back from the contractors if you've got any kind of proof that they knocked over trees, we, we should haven't. be getting back. And I think we should be putting pressure on our legal officers to make certain they do get the money back. It's it's a it's one of those situations where you couldn't be sure who had actually done the damage. Mm -hmm. um, so nobody was claiming it. So it's a really tricky one. I mean, we were really lucky in West yeah. Town Lane in that a, a lovely resident happened to be there with his phone and recorded mm. the whole incident. Mm. So the telephone numbers of the, the garden centre, I just think the irony of a garden centre looking over a I, tree. I saw brilliant. that footage, yeah, there was no doubt who did that. Absolutely no doubt about it at all. It was absolutely brilliant. It was fantastic, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was so, so easy. But Celia, it, it is. It's really difficult. You've got to prove it, haven't you? It's, it's impossible now. Impossible. Um, uh, Tim, I think, and then Mark. Thanks, Celia. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask uh, around the process of that, because I know we've also got some money to uh, plant trees because of the pathway that's been cut down to the, um, to the flood, um, flood prevention scheme in, in um, Nightingale. Uh, Valley, that's there's there's money coming from that as well to plant trees, and it sounds like we're running out of places. Is it something we should be going out to the community now, looking for ideas and passing them on, so that uh, you know where to go and look to to do these evaluations? 
Absolutely, that's that's crossed my path. So um, I'm getting the details from my manager, Richard Enyan, about that particular one, Tim, and um, trying to link into Friends of Brislington Brook to get their ideas in the first instance, and then you know liaise with yourself. I think they'd be pretty keen to see that spent within the valley. There are gaps in the valley, actually. And the other thing that's um, a risk down there is there's quite a lot of ash and we're suffering quite badly from ash dieback at the moment. So mm -hmm. there is a bit of room for spending that on mitigation planting. And then my initial suggestion, again, was back to Richard because we're in early stages of this hitting my desk, were to uh, try and get a or push towards a scheme of a mixture of standard bigger trees, um, like you see with the street trees, and a mixture of uh, infill woodland as well. So that would be my suggestion. But we are li liaising with, with friends of Brislington Brook now to, to get that ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Mark, and then Tony. Thank you. Thanks. Um, on Victor Road um, trees, not to prolong this, but we did ask officers to investigate this and no one's clear about who who, who did the damage and when. Uh, it's, I think it's clear that one tree was lost through a vehicle, but there, there's also some evidence that um, some substances were poured on the roots of another. So um, I suppose my concern is that we don't hold up the replanting of these tree plits. It's an important community aspiration. And for those um, that perhaps are not aware of the geography, uh, it supports the safe route that's been created into South Street Park if you walk across from Marksbury across uh, West Street, um, particularly widened pavements, so so much more family friendly, and the pedestrian crossings. So just to give you a wider context, it's really it's really really important that, that it it supports that other investment in in South Street Park, um, and, and very much welcome the move towards an interactive map. We don't get the full picture from these long lists. And actually, we do need an area-wide understanding of planting and, and the sequencing of planting. So, so I welcome that. Mm -hmm. Tony, then Joss. Yeah, I'm, um, for one of my other caps is uh, I'm, I'm a volunteer with Friends of Brissington Brook. And on the uh, steering group, we had a um, contact earlier in the month from Alexandra Rope. Um, it's a name I don't know with, a, with an offer of a hazel, field, maple and hawthorn it's, uh, to plant in the woodland I think um, uh, and the trouble is with the woodland woodlands is woodlands, they're full of trees you know. And we, so we, we had to actually turn this um, offer down at the moment because perhaps we didn't know enough about the uh, organisation she was representing or, or that we have the space to do anything with. So John's points are um, yeah, noted and uh, gratefully accepted because, we, yeah, there is an opportunity to do more in that particular vicinity to, to increase the um, diversity of the woodland because it's a bit, bit monocultural in many places. That's all, thank you. Do you want to respond, John? Or I think you know that that's that's useful. Thanks for that, Tony. I mean, you, um, not not to to get the real specifics, but I know there's certain areas of Brisbane and particularly where the rope swings are on the southern side, that we could do quite a bit of planting. So that's for that. Uh, just a note on the Victory Road thing. I think a pragmatic approach would be to fire ahead, use 106 to to plant these trees. If we do have, find out who the developer is, we could charge them retrospectively and. I'd, yeah. I'd have to speak to Keith about putting that money back in the 106 pot and, and Jim Cliff, but I think that would be a sensible approach, really. Joss. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wanted to bring up the horrible issue. You mentioned ash dieback um, and the impact that it's going to have in the city. I don't know what, what percentage of the council's um, tree stock is ash, but it is going to have a massive impact. I'm a trustee at Arno's Vale Cemetery and um, we are going to lose the, the cemetery by the time we finish is going to look yeah. um, entirely different actually because you know about I think two thirds of the trees are going to have to come down and I just um, wondered if it's going to make any difference to us in this, in, in this area with ash. 
Yeah, it's, it's going to make a massive difference. So um, we've had a moratorium on planting it for about five years with this in, in, in mind. Um, I know that if you are going to clear out wholesale like the guys at Arnesville are doing, um, you need to get a felon license. So it's going to be, we're not doing that as a council. So as our proposal um, with managing the ash is if it's a risk, so if it's a roadside tree or if it's overhanging a children's playground, for instance, of course it's going to come down. But actually there's not that much in our parks. Uh, there's very little on our street trees. It's mostly an unmanaged woodland. So with that in mind, most of it will be left to, unless it is reported as hazardous, come down. Um, it's going to be a massive loss. And this year it has kicked in. We've, we've been pretty lucky as an area, um, but there's big pockets of it around the city now. Uh, Stockwood's been decimated. Stockwood open space. We've done a lot of work up there. So um, there's a variety of ways we can mitigate against it. One of the big things we're looking at is when we look at species, we're looking at um, comparable species for habitat. So for instance, English oak is a good replacement for ash because it can support about 80% of the species in vertebrates and bigger stuff that live in it. Um, whereas sorbus varieties, rowan, um, et cetera, white bean can't. So, so that's in our plans as well. But it is a pretty much wait and say, we're gonna lose uh, forestry commission estimate between 90 and 95% of ash. It is Britain's most common broadleaf tree. So it is going to be massively impactful. Um, the, the, the approach they're going to have is a pretty similar to what they did, what they did with the Dutch elm disease. Yeah. And see, see what's going to survive, examine the DNA of those trees that survive, bring them out and develop new cultivars. So, so that's the process. But it's, I know South Gloss have appointed a, an ash dieback officer. That's their job to look at it and manage it. Um, it's basically within Bristol being managed within Tim Brandrum's team. So again, Ian Clark as your local officer. Yeah, well, I mean, Tim, uh, we've had meetings with Tim already on site yeah. at Arno's Vale to talk about how we're going to manage it. And yeah. we're going to be working in partnership with Bristol City Council because it's a task, unfortunately, yeah. for the cemetery, which is a, it is a bit beyond us. But I a just little, wondered... A of, sorry, a little bit of good news about that, Joss. I've met with Nick Bull on site and oh, we've, yeah. we've looked at mitigation planting this winter. So we will be planting some other species because at the top of Arnos Vale, um, the, the knoll side, it's all ash and sycamore. Um, so then yeah. the area the cleave fell in and that's what we're going to be replacing this winter. So that's that's at least yeah. the work ongoing. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm just mindful of the time. Um, are there any other comments about the trees? But I think we probably finished that item. Well, I just wanted to raise a couple, just a couple of really quick things, because then you just need to go to your decision, I would suggest. Um, um, John's obviously produced um, an equalities impact assessment, which I assume you've all managed to read in terms of the equalities, equalities duty. Um, just to point out, so John's produced proposals for 23 tree replacements in actual strict terms at 765.21 per tree that actually comes to 17,599.83 it leaves £29.34 as a little stub um, across those different um, section 106s of residue section 106 other area committees have tended to just agree that that can just be put towards additional maintenance costs there's a maintenance cost in the tree costs but you know whether whether it's worth hanging on to £29 um, and waiting for further attached with that, or you are, you're agreeable to just putting that into maintenance costs, I would say. Is the it's decision. not going to go very far, let's be honest, is no, it? No, and, 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 and it will drive, you could, you could do it because you want to drive Jim Cliff mad by having millions of little stubs of money <laughs> sitting around. Um, I'd support that, but I don't think he would. Um, so, um, no, I... yeah, and you probably wouldn't because you're not cruel like that. So, um, so John's proposal is to just spend out all of those remaining section 106s as as you've discussed you've discussed the replacement of the south uh, south park a uh, south park with the victor road um spends and so the proposal is to spend um 176217 as as set out in the report with the exception of the victor road replacements so is anybody against that easy way of doing it no, no abstentions. Okay, so I think that decision is made to spend that, that amount of money. Thank you very much, thank you. I'm just slightly mindful that we kind of skipped some of the public forum topics around the transport and highways. 
Um, and we probably should just go back to note that we had some statements about transport and highways. Well, I think we can just note it, don't we? That we've read them. We have read them, um, and we are not able, as I understand, to respond fully at this time, but we will be able to at the end of August with a possible proposal that that will be put on the website for all people to see, so people will know where each highway's proposal is and what's happening to it. Is that I mean, correct, Keith? Did you yeah, want to I, I'm them? really happy to explore that. Um, I can't see any reason why it shouldn't be public, really. I think it's quite healthy, actually, to yeah. have a public statement yeah. up there. We, last did the, we did the last one and sent it out to you um, from, from Parks and Highways at the end of February. And so it's, it's a six month update, really, the end of August, which is, you know, good and helpful. Um, I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of not ter a huge amount of movement. There actually is some movement on the two that have been inquired about, the St. Luke's Crossing. But I will follow up that up in more detail, Celia, yeah. and I will respond to those individuals okay. um, via Thank Corinna um, so that they get um, a, a, a more reply. nuanced response than we've had so far. And I'll copy you into it. That'd be great. Thank you very much. So that we make sure that we're answering all the questions that the public yeah, asks. Yeah, that's, that's really, yeah. really important. Okay, uh, I've lost my way now. Um, Is it, um, can it be that um, Keith uh, feeds back to individual councillors? Because I know Tressa put yes. in a statement, didn't they? Which obviously yes. goes yeah. to, back to John. Yeah. Uh, St yeah. Luke's, I don't know. Is that, um, I don't know. Is that Noel, St Luke's? Gary? Oh, no, that's in mine as well. That's in mine as well. That's yeah. in yours as well. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I don't know where the borders are. Um, but yeah, I, think... I have a very, uh, I have a very active populace in my ward. Do you? Huh? <laughs> it sounds like you do. So I'll copy in... engaged, I should say. So I'll copy in John and Lucy to those responses as well. So they're up to date with them um, with what their constituents are asking about. Yeah, that's really helpful. And then, you know, we know exactly what's going on. But yes, if you could explore putting that publicly later, I think that would be a great yeah, idea. It's, it's a really good idea, yeah. It, yeah. it, it, it disseminates it further. Yeah. It so, would be helpful if we got a, an update on the road schemes. I mean, we've got one that's actually not last year's, it's the year before's. And really, it's now getting rather tedious having to keep asking. And it was yeah. four, four years before that that it got agreed. Originally. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the, the updates they're providing are on, um, uh, um, I was going to say heritage, but I mean, kind of legacy, legacy <laughs> neighbourhood partnership schemes. And now they're getting to be legacy um, area committee schemes, aren't they? But um, area committee schemes as well. So, so that they'll update on all of them. I think there's perhaps a wider conversation to be had with, with highways about some of this, but um, yes. that's not for this meeting. Um, okay, uh, so we have, I think, finished all the recommendations that were on the list, having hopped about. Are there, is there any items of any other business? No. The only, the, the only thing that I wanted to just say, and I'm saying it to all the area committees, is that obviously the timetable that we put forward for um, area committee decision making, community conversations, proposals, etc., was, um, was 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 based around the um, the elections in May that were supposed to take place this year, and as they're hopefully going to take place in May next year. I'm, I'm assuming we'll propose a very similar timetable and we'll explore that with the chairs of the committees. I just wonder if there's any comments from your experience, whether that timetable was OK, whether there are any things you'd want, like us to take into account in thinking about the timetable next year. Can I, can I make a suggestion in that case? Yep. Because that's kind of it may be something that members of this committee might want to think about. Um, rather than a response to you directly now. Yep. Can, can people, if they have any ideas, um, correspond with you directly and then yep, you sure. can work up any proposals? Yep. Because I just think that um, we may, people may want to think about it. I certainly couldn't give you a response straight away. What we'll do, Joss, is we'll I'll communicate with the chairs of the area committees and say, can they sound out? Their, 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 their fellow councillors on the area committee and then channel that back through to us. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so yep. send any ideas to me if you, if you wish. Yeah. 
Okay, I think we've done, unless anybody tells me otherwise. Um, we don't have a date for another meeting. Um, so if we do, it'll be because there's some major issue has occurred, but I hope there's not. Um, I guess it's sort of watch this space for when the next one is. Celia, sure. can, I just, can I just say thanks to um, to Keith for the work that he's done on, yeah. on the Eastwood Farm stuff, because um, I know it's been dragging on for quite a long time and it's been very helpful. So thanks, Keith, for that. Thank you. I'll second vote of thanks. Yeah, yeah. I'll third it. Thank you very much, Keith. OK. And well, can I thank John, who's been who's been the, the engine behind all of these tree proposals and and has been it, it just knows his stuff so beautifully that it makes it really easy. Good. Great. Well, thank, thank you. all. You. Thank you all for attending. I will bring this meeting to a close. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Bye.